What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another SketchUp and Enscape tutorial for you. So I wanted to teach you a quick way in your renderings to simulate a wet pavement effect inside of Enscape. So we're basically going to go in and we're going to edit a map in order to adjust the way that the light reflects. I saw this question on the official Enscape announcement video and it was something that I had to teach myself so that I could make my video about this. I wanted to show you how I did it. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so for this video, we're using the same example file that we've used before. The, the, it's spelled Sprouts Center by Taz 1985. I think it might supposed to be Sports Center. I'm not really sure. But in either case, you can look for Sprouts Center by Taz 1985 in the 3D Warehouse if you want to download it and follow along with this tutorial. But basically what we've done here is we've created a very simple rendering. And on the outside of this building, I have added a concrete material. And what we have over here in Enscape is we have basically just a concrete material with light coming off of it. And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to show you a quick way to adjust the maps that go along with these materials in order to create a wet pavement effect. So to start off, we're going to open up our materials section in Enscape. And so that's going to allow us to edit our materials. And I'm going to select this material using the eyedropper inside of SketchUp. So what that's going to do is that's going to bring up your materials editor. This allows you to change different settings inside of Enscape. And so right now what we have loaded in here is we've loaded in our texture map, which is making our texture show up. We've also loaded in a bump map, or in this case I've loaded a normal map. That's what gives this the bumpy look on the face over here inside of Enscape. So if you look at this, you can see how we've got our sun reflecting off of the pavement and you can kind of see the ups and downs of the material here. Well, what we want to do is we want to simulate light bouncing off of water puddles right after a rainstorm. So you know how like after something rains, um, things kind of evaporate and dry at different rates. And we want to kind of simulate that on this material so that this image gets a little bit more interesting. And so if, if you remember inside of Enscape, you can adjust the roughness of a material um, in, by adjusting this slider. That's going to adjust how much the sun reflects off of a material. So you can see if I drag this to the right, the sun doesn't reflect very much at all. If I drag it to the left, it reflects a lot. But the problem with this is this is very uniform, right? So it kind of looks like this has a layer of water all over it. The problem is after a rainstorm, water is rarely uniform. You need little puddles here and little puddles there. And so if you remember, you can use the albedo in order to set this. You can also load in a map. So for example, I download a lot of materials from websites like Polygon, and I will link to Polygon in the notes down below, but basically these materials come with different maps in here that do different things. So for example, you've got maps that contain your texture, like this one right here and this one right here, and then you've got maps that do displacement, which make your material look more 3D, and you've got things like normal maps, which make things look bumpy. So like out here, we've loaded our normal map in to make this look bumpy. Well, we want to focus on either the gloss map or the reflection map. It doesn't really seem to have mattered in this case. It seems like we can work with either one of them. And really what we're going to do is use this to apply a noise layer anyway. So it really doesn't matter which one we pick. And so what I want to do is I want to open up either the gloss map or the reflection map. In this case, I'm going to open the reflection map up inside of a, your image editor. So for me, this is going to be Photoshop. So Photoshop allows you to add the noise inside of this material really quickly. Um, I'm not 100% sure. I think you could probably do this with a free program like GIMP. You could also do a Google search for something like Perlin Noise, and there should be images that you can use as well. Inside of Photoshop, what we want to do is we want to create a new layer on top of our background. And I don't want to get too deep into Photoshop. We're going to make this very, very simple. Um, but we don't want to add this on top of our background layer because we don't want to adjust that. We want to stack this on top of it on a new layer. So I've clicked the button down here for add new layer. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to filter and there's a button in here for render or there's a menu option in here for render. There's an option in here for clouds. And so what clouds is going to do is that's going to add a new layer and it's going to create a cloud look inside of Photoshop. And if you look at this, 
If you think about this in the sense that the dark might be puddles and the light might be dry pavement, this is actually what drying water on pavement would look like. You have little pockets that are still wet and you have other areas that are dry. So what we've done is added this clouds layer on top of this and really we're just using the image in the background as more of a more of a size than anything else. So we're not really going to use the background image anymore. And so if we were to take this and we were to export this right now into an image and load it in as a map, we'd get a little bit of the effect that we're looking for. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm just gonna do a file, export. I'm gonna do a quick export on this and we'll export it as a PNG file. And I'm just gonna export this to my image folder. And so we'll call this something like puddles one and click save. And so now, what we want to do is we want to go back into Enscape and we want to click on the button for add map or the little plus button under reflection. So if I click on this and I add this map and then you look at this rendering, you can see how now what you've got in here is you've got a little bit less uniform reflection coming off of this pavement. So you can see how it's a little less uniform. If you kind of scroll down, you can see how some areas are reflecting more than others, but it's not quite what we're looking for. It doesn't have a very strong puddle effect. So what we need to do is we need to go back into Photoshop and we need to edit that map again. So we're going to go back into Photoshop and what we want is we want more contrast because if you remember this is a map meaning it's containing information and then Enscape is reading that information. Well what we want is we want the lights to be lighter and the darks to be darker so that that effect is more clear. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to add a layer on top of this or an effect on top of this for contrast. So we're just gonna go over here and under this button right here, the little circle that's divided into two circles, if you click on this and then click on brightness and contrast, what that's gonna do is that's gonna add a layer on top of this where you can adjust the brightness and the contrast. So you can see how what I can do is I can use this slider in order to drag this up and down so that I can adjust how bright the lights are. So as I make this brighter, that means that Enscape is gonna read this better and you're gonna see your puddles a little bit better inside of Enscape. Or you can adjust your contrast between your darks and your lights. So if you want this to have more puddles in here, you can drag this to the right and have really high contrast. If you want this to have more dry pavement, you can drag this to the left. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna drag this over here. And even then, sometimes this doesn't really give you the contrast between the lights and the darks that you want. Well, another trick you can use is you can click on the button right here and you can add another brightness and contrast layer. So you can see how now this really gives me a lot of control over my brights and my darks. So you can add a couple different layers of the brightness and contrast if you want to in order to adjust the effect that you're going to get. And so if you wanna look at how this looked before you made these changes, you can just click the little eye right here in order to turn those off. So you can see how initially this was very dark and there wasn't a whole lot of contrast. When I turn on my contrast layers, you can see how there's a lot more contrast and brightness in here. Well, now we're gonna take this and we're gonna export it again. So I'm just gonna do a file, export, and we'll export this as a PNG. And then we're gonna label this one Puddles 2. And so now, if we go back into SketchUp and we delete out this map and then click right here to add a new map, we're going to find our Puddles 2 that we just did. And we're just going to double click on that and we're going to load this map in to our reflections. And so now, if I look at this, you can see how it's much less uniform. So what you have in here is you have a piece of pavement that really looks like it's got some areas where water has puddled and it's also got some areas where the pavement has dried out. So it's a much more realistic look, but not only is it a much more realistic look, it's a much more interesting view than what we had before. So alternatively, if you just found a Perlin noise image, you could probably load that into the map in order to simulate this. But you can see 
how now as I move my sun, I'm getting these really interesting reflections coming off of this pavement and it really looks like we just had a storm and some of these areas are dry and some of them aren't. And then from there, you, you could come in and make as many adjustments in Photoshop as you want to kind of fine tune your results. But this is just a really quick, easy way to fake some wet pavement inside inside of your renderings without having to do a whole lot of extra work. So I know some of you are better at Photoshop and probably at rendering than I am. So if you have any additional tips for creating an effect like this, leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear them. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.